Greetings, my fellow mad scientists and tinkerers, and a very warm welcome to you all. Now you can walk into any watch repair shop or even an authorized dealer and ask them to restore your watch box for you, and they will probably point and laugh at you. It's not something I would do myself, but here I am doing it, and it's down to the influence of the mad scientists and crazy tinkerers that make up this channel and this community. I don't know whether I'm the naughty influence on you or whether you're the naughty influence on me, but either way, we egg each other on to do things we probably shouldn't be doing, and today is one of those days to set a new precedent. Many of you who saw the case restoration video of the Amiga Jedi were instantly like, dude, you gotta restore that box. So here we are. If you haven't watched part one of the Amiga Jedi restoration video, then you can watch it here later. So this is all stuck down with adhesive. My hands look disgusting, so let's get some gloves on. So if we're gonna get a good finish around the edges and stuff, we'll have to remove all this, which is all fixed in with adhesive. Let's see. Ooh. Got a little bit impatient there. I want to take this little badge off as well. Let's be very careful. So we don't distort it. There's all our bits and bobs there. So I have many modern Amiga boxes in stock which have this fake leather feel, but this one seems to be just fabric with leather paint on it, which leads me to believe that it may be one of the first iterations of the famous Amiga Scarlet type box. And they do have a more faux leather feel about them. There's another one here. And this one seems like it does have a coating on it rather than fabric like our one. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is get all this hoovered up before I spray anything on it and have those marks embed themselves even further. And then we can give it a little spray down. Otherwise that red dye is gonna turn it all pink. Now you can see those red stains a bit more clearly now that it's wet. Ooh, you can see almost dripping off. That's cool. Now do I do help? Now remember the inside of this is just cardboard, so you don't 
normally with the stain removers you'd leave it on to penetrate but we don't want it to get into the card and start wetting up the card so I've just let it sprayed it and then wiped it all off oh, yeah. and that's looking pretty decent we've also hair dried it so all that spray doesn't get onto the cardboard and start mushing it all up That should be fine, that will give us a nice contact. So, as you guys can see, it's basically fabric. There isn't any base coat or anything, like a filler or anything on there. It's just paint. First thing is first, let's get the right colour. We have scarlet red, autumn red, just red red, red red. We have fire red, ooh that's too bright, and we have raspberry. So this is another box that I have, the silver logo, but you can see the colour and this is a modern Omega service pouch that they send your watch back in. So you can see there's a big colour difference between this really old one. The raspberry, that's definitely known. So we can get rid of that one. This red could be a contender that one there this is a this is fire red is a bit on the orangey side and then this autumn red looks a bit on the brownie side I would say this is the scarlet Ooh. now this one is very close to this service pouch and this one seems to be very close to this sort of 90s style box I think it's a toss up between these two Now to remove all this paint, I could use some sandpaper but I don't want to damage the fabric underneath so I probably could remove this with a little sponge so I've just got a little bit of packaging material here it's just a bit of foam that comes with the packaging boxes and that's not that abrasive I'll wet it a little bit, see what happens. Oh, yeah, it's working much better with a bit of spray. Just a tiny amount of doing the trick and this spray smells like lychees. 
Mm, if you guys don't know what lychees are, you need to find out. So look at the difference so far and then compare it to that. We've got a bit of a way to go. Make sure you get all the stitches as well because the stitches have paint on them too but that's how it's looking so far and now we'll do a bit of repair work sort of things like this which needs a little bit of glue the corners here you can see so we'll just let that dry and then we'll do some repair work and then we can do some painting. You can see all the old glue. And we'll remove this bit here as well. Actually, let's do a little sample patch. Just check out the other one. Whoa. Nice. And there's the other one. Delicious. Oh, now that looks pretty dark, doesn't it? And that color looks like it's just in between those two so I've put some of the red on top of that scarlet you can see there's a slight variation in the tone 
so I think do the base coat in scarlet and then we'll do a top coat with the red now this farty little nail brush isn't going to do the trick so what I'm going to do is pour this into a little dish let's do this let's try sponge first okay so we're just going to get a few a couple of light coats on rather than one thick coat so that's what happens with the sponge and let's try the brush oh yeah I like the brush let's use the brush uh, and so I'm doing the bottom first oh that looks nice lovely and relocate equipment at the same time how's that looking that's just the shadow of my microphone you can see that little red spot shining through cheeky little bugger so we'll just let that dry and then I'll do the top Friday's takeaway night so hopefully it should be dry by the time that's all been woofed down so I'll see you in a bit it's flattened down all that fluff and bonded it all together so now I'll just finish the rest I think I'll do that with the lid open so I can get these bits as well so now that it's dried give that a little rub and just use a bit of sponge which is abrasive enough I think for this just to get little spots off like this flatten all that down and you can see how robust that paint is so what are we going to do about this colour if I do another coat in that scarlet I think it's going to get darker so I think I'm going to mix the two and see if we can get something a little bit more like this I'm going to use the normal red and mix the scarlet ah oh, look at that here goes nothing oh my word That's like British telephone box red. So I've left it dry for about a day and as you can see the paint has glued all those loose fibers but we can see a little bit of grittiness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smoothen all that down before I give it a final coat. And there's not that much paint on the sandpaper so this paint is very durable just need to give it a little wipe oh we flattened all those hardened fibers down and I'll give it a wipe down I think that is ready for the final coat even the sort of texture is quite similar now
Oh, no, you don't get to see the final watch in this episode, cheeky. So in the end, I wasn't quite happy with the colour and wanted to get that colour much closer than the first mix of red and scarlet. So I used some of that raspberry and the fire red and I was content with the final result. I loved you with the fire red, now it's turning blue. So there you go, friends. What do you guys think? Did we do it? Without the harsh artificial lighting, it actually looks really pucker and feels like it won't turn into dust within the next 50 years or so. This one was pretty straightforward because it didn't have any of that modern pleather or faux leather type material. I also think this paint was slightly on the thin side and a bit more experimentation is required with other brands of paints. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and found it useful. If you don't want to miss the full video, which should be finished soon, God willing, then subscribe and put your bells on. If you haven't watched the case restoration video yet, then check that one out too. I'll leave a link in the description. So peace and love to you all. Take care friends. Tara a bit.